Yo, what's going on, Serpa Squad? As you know, I absolutely love my ponds. There's a DIY garden pond in the backyard, and my aquascape ecosystem pond in the front. Both are incredibly relaxing, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. My family always loves seeing them when they visit, especially my mom. In fact, she's wanted one of her own for years now. Well, I've been scheming to finally make her dream a reality. Let's get to work. The way this project began was with a dump truck full of large stones. I had them delivered in front of my parents' fence, which isn't far from where the pond will be. I was able to lift and cart most of them away with a wheelbarrow, but a few I had to move with a hand truck. I had the smaller stones and gravel delivered the following day. I also cleaned up the work area and removed some of the current landscape. I knew where I wanted the pond, but I needed a visual reference. I used a few garden hoses to make that happen. I made measurements as I did to ensure I properly utilized the space for the materials I have on hand. I also had to move a few plants to make room. I finalized the layout with some paint. I continued by roughing out the waterfall. It should work, but I had to verify that there was enough tubing to reach from here to the spillway. There was more than enough. I adjusted the hoses slightly and painted along the guide. I also accounted for the overflow to the right of the basin. Now it's time to excavate the area. I started by digging along the paint and removing the grass on top to get the base shape. Then I broke up the ground with a pickaxe. This makes things much easier because the ground in my area is primarily clay. So I broke it up with a pick and removed it with a shovel. I'll dig this out using a series of three shelves. Each one will be around 10 inches deep. Once I got the appropriate depth for the first shelf, I went around and straightened the edges. I also accounted for the overflow. I checked for placement once again and cleared the area. It fit well, but I also had to ensure that it was level. From here, I used a board and level to get a rough idea of where the water line will be in relation to the overflow. It looked good. I double checked the level on the overflow and backfilled the void with gravel and dirt. Now I can go down another level. I painted out the shape and repeated the excavation process from before. I went down another 10 inches or so. I continued and added the third step. I went back and did a little fine tuning. I cleaned up the shelves with a pick and straightened out the edges like before. I also tamped everything down to remove inconsistencies. Let's move on to the waterfall. I dug out the top portion where the spillway will go first. As I did this, I had to remove another plant. I went on and dug out a small trench for the waterfall with various tools. I'll build up a berm around this area, so I could have got away without digging it at all. That said, the trench will help me place the stones. With that addressed, I can prepare the spillway. For that, I'm using a Biofalls, which is an upflow biological filter. I installed a bulkhead on the back. Then I put silicone around the pipe fitting and screwed it in place. I put the tubing from earlier on this. I locked it in place with hose clamps. I placed it in the hole I dug earlier. It fit perfectly. I pulled the hose down to the overflow. I kept it straight so the distance was as short as possible. This will maximize the pump's efficiency. Then I dug out a trench with a pick. I went back and checked the level on the spillway. This one should be level from side to side and leaning slightly forward to encourage the spillover effect. Once it was good, I backfilled the space with dirt. I put the tube in the overflow and covered up the trench. I also added more dirt around this area to begin building up the berm. With everything excavated and the hardware accounted for, I can line the pond. I started with the underlayment, which is a geotextile fabric. This helps the soil retain its shape and prevents punctures in the liner. I pulled it into the basin and worked from the center out. This makes it easy to account for the shelves. Once the fit was good, I cut out a small section near the overflow. Then I pulled the EPDM liner into the basin and stretched it out like the fabric. 
I got it centered and situated it accordingly. In doing so, I made sure to leave excess around all of the edges. Now I can finally bring it to life with the rocks. I started with the bottom shelf and situated them in a way that they lock together. This will create a strong foundation for everything else to rest on. With the bottom shelf rocked out, the liner isn't going anywhere. This means we can attach it to the overflow. I put the liner in front of the opening and pressed around the edges to make an indentation. I cut inside of this area to create a hole. A filter plate fits into this hole and bolts to the front of the overflow. I attached the top corner bolts to create a starting point. Once I did, I removed it from the front. I wiped off the plastic and liner to remove debris. Then I put a bead of silicone along the holes. I reattached the faceplate and secured it with the remaining bolts. This presses the silicone firmly between the pieces, which once cured creates a waterproof gasket of sorts. I continued adding rocks to the upper shelves. In doing so, I left the area near the waterfall empty. I did this so I can easily overlap the liners. Installing the liner to the spillway is essentially the same process as before. I pulled the edge of the liner up to the biofalls. I secured a faceplate to the front with two bolts to create a guide. Then I removed it and wiped down the surfaces. I ran a bead of silicone along the plastic and reattached the faceplate to create the seal. I went back and removed the excess. With that secured, I pulled back the liner so I could add geotextile fabric. Then I started rocking from the top down. I started here so I can manipulate the liner as I go down if needed. I put a few rocks on the sides of the spillway and one in the front to frame in the waterfall. I continued down the trench until I got about three quarters of the way down. At this point, I had enough built up that I could see how the liner would lay. I cut off some of the excess. Then I wiped down both sections to remove debris. I secured them together with seam tape. As I did, I pulled the pieces tight to keep a consistent seam. From there, I could finish placing the large stones. I put one of the biggest ones on the top shelf to the right of the waterfall. This will frame things in and help conceal the liner. I added others to the left side. I used them to prop up a flat rock where water will pour into the pond. Once I built up the sides of the waterfall, I removed the excess liner and fabric. I left extra so I could fold up the edges as I create the berm. I secured it with a few rocks for now. Then I filled in areas under and between the stones with expanding foam. This will create the optimal flow of water. Otherwise it would flow under and between the stones which isn't ideal. I let it cure for about 10 minutes. I went back and pressed it down to remove the expanded areas. I also filled in a lot of the spaces with gravel to hide the foam. I continued hiding the liner down in the basin with more gravel. I stacked up the larger rocks from before so they sit just above the shelves and keep this gravel from spilling into the lower levels. It's a nice way of making the materials work for you. As I did this, I enlisted my dad's help to build up the berm around the waterfall. Again, we made sure that the liner curled up to create a bowl around the stones which will retain the water. I removed the excess liner around the basin. I also made a trench near the stones. I folded the remaining bits of liner into this and buried it. I added more gravel along this area to make a clean transition and to finish the hardscape. I sprayed it down to clear away dirt and debris. Then I began filling the basin. As it filled, I started landscaping around the feature. I put the plants I removed earlier back in areas I felt complemented the pond. Once it was full, I gave the waterfall a test run. 
It looked good, but there was an issue with the basin. The water was much lower than I anticipated. That was due to a design error on my end. I put the overflow way lower than I intended. Luckily, I left extra liner in case I had to make adjustments. I simply drained the pond, removed the stones in this area, and dug around the back of the overflow. I raised it up to the appropriate height and put things back to how they were before. No big deal. While I had the pond drained, I sprayed down the scape for a second time. Once I filled it back up, I added the debris catching basket to the overflow. I put filter pads and bio balls in the spillway as well. I guess I forgot to mention that I have a pump in the overflow that pulls water in and sends it up to the spillway. Anyway, I went on to finish the landscape. I added various plants near the rocks that will spill over and create a really seamless look long term. I also put large plants in the back to frame everything in. I stuffed sedum and other plants between stones to hide the liner and break up the monotony of the rocky look. I continued this process with new plants and by redistributing what my mom already had to better integrate with escape. I also edged and mulched around the entire backside, but I couldn't get much of that filmed because of rain. At this point, it wasn't quite done, but it was far enough along that I could show my mom. Here's her reaction. For the past uh, five days or so, we've been working on this pond. I got my mom behind me and my dad's seen it. It's for him too, but my mom's really the one who was uh, going to be super excited about it. So here, I'm going to take you. All right, here, stop. Turn this way. Hold on, let me. Okay, you can open your eyes. Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a freaking paradise. Well, yeah, I had to do it right. I had to go oh, all out. Wow. Oh, you... <laughs> I even got your chairs too. I see that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I... <laughs> we're never moving. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. I'm telling you, like. So tranquil, huh? Oh, uh, what you put into this, like, oh my gosh. I did all the work. Yeah, Dad did not. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna give him but... a hug. For a whole week, I haven't seen this backyard. <laughs> So worth it. Needless to say, she loved it. However, there's still some fine tuning to do. I added plenty of marginal plants to the basin to bring more life to the inside of the pond. I also did a proper clean to remove the remaining dirt left over from construction. I added a few flat stones to create hiding areas for livestock. We'll add them in a future video. No pond is complete without water lilies, so I added a few of them as well. I also put a piece of driftwood over the spillway. I finished off the project with moss. I placed it throughout cracks and crevices all over the waterfall. There you have it, my parents' new ecosystem pond. As always, I wish I would have went bigger, but even at this size, it still gives them the pond vibe they wanted. You'll get the sights, sounds, and relaxing benefits of a pond regardless of how big or small it is. Plus, I could easily leave the waterfall as is and expand the basin in the future if they want something larger. Until then, this is a pretty good view to enjoy. That said, there are a few final details I need to address. I want to add more driftwood, but I couldn't find much at the moment. I also need to hide the spillway a little better, and the overflow. Faux rocks are on back order right now, but eventually I'll cover it with one like I have at my pond. 
This was my first time building a pond like this by myself, and I'll say that other than working through 95 degree weather and excess rain, this was pretty easy to build. Easier than my original DIY pond, I'd say. I suppose that's in part due to the fact that I went with an aquascape pond kit instead of building everything from scratch. That was my original plan, but I decided to go this route for convenience. Plus, my friends over at Aquascape were happy to help out and provide it for the build. Other than the rocks, plants, and the seam tape, it had everything I needed for the build. So, most of the things you saw me use came in that kit. If you wanted to build something like this, my advice would be to go with an 8x11 kit or larger if you have this space. The process to follow is exactly the same. The 6x8 kit still made a beautiful and functional pond, but we're limited on what we can stock it with. Regardless, I think the end result on this one is pretty legit, and I'm so happy to have finally made one for my parents. That's all for now though. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something new. Let me know what you think about the pond down in the comments. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.